Assalamu alaikum, this is Saqib Shafi, and these are my Ramadan Chronicles for 2011, day 20. For day 20, we're going to be talking about bald, fat, unpregnant, pimply people. The reason why we're talking about such descriptive people happens to do with the fact that I got a haircut. I really needed a haircut lately. And I asked around, I asked on Facebook and stuff, and some people told me where to go for a haircut. I went to Dearborn, found some, um, you know, Air Brothers. They had a barber shop, walked in, and I got a haircut. And I wanted to make sure I found a male barber. Uh, you know, Islamically, it's not necessarily the best to, um, you know, go to a female barber if you're a male, and vice versa. So, found a guy. He cut my hair. He did a really good job. Right? Not if I don't say so myself. Like, you know, decent uh, fade. I didn't want like a crazy super number zero and a half uh, fade. He did a good job, you know, he kind of did the lining up of the sideburns and the temples, right? Kind of like the Arab style. He lined up my beard because I've been doing a terrible job of lining my own. And I was very satisfied with the service. You know, I think I'll go back, inshallah. But what does that have to do with our topic for today? If you can't tell, I don't have as much hair in my head as I should for someone who's 25 turning 26. Um, ever since I was in high school, or, I, or that's at least when I noticed, I've been losing my hair. I've been suffering from male pattern baldness, also known as alopecia, scientifically speaking. And I started losing my hair way younger than any male really should. Usually that kicks in around like late 30s, mid 30s to like 40s. For me, it was like age 14, 15. I started to notice signs of it. Slowly as I grew up, uh, more and more hair came out. And admittedly, it was difficult, right? Like anyone who goes through any sort of physical deformity or a physical issue in their life, that they're not supposed to, that's like abnormal. It was really difficult growing up, uh, especially because, you know, I'm a young teenager. Uh, it's that time, you know, you're worried about your appearance and all that. And on top of clothes and like the way you look and all this other stuff, I'm losing my hair. And I'm in high school. And when I get to college, it's getting worse and worse, I'm trying to get married, all that good stuff. It was very, very difficult. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I got married, right? I found a wife who's great. She you know, wanted to marry me for who I am and not necessarily for my amazing four locks on my head, alhamdulillah. But um, the hardest part wasn't the actual hair loss, right? It wasn't like me looking into the mirror and thinking about my own self. The hardest part was what people said to me with their tongues, the comments that people made. Usually they would be definitive statements. Dude, you're losing your hair, period, right? As if they're trying to tell me something I don't know. When, you know, I look in the mirror every day, I know I'm losing my hair, man. Or as a question, right? Are you losing your hair? Question mark. Um, yes, because, you know, I happen to take a shower daily and I can see that I'm losing my hair. I can see what's on my pillow, so on and so forth. Especially when I take, when I get haircuts, every time I get a haircut and I come home, I notice I have less hair in my head. You don't have to ask me about it. Now, to be fair, I think most people, when they see stuff like this, they're so shocked, right? And in my case, a young person who's starting to lose his hair, they just react right away without really thinking. And they'll spew out like a question or like a statement and they'll say something, right? Usually it's innocent, but you got to be careful not to be so insensitive. Sometimes it's not innocent. Some people are very, very mean in what they say. I've, I've had people that will come up to me and like touch my hair like, dude, what's going on here, man? Like you got nothing there. To say something with your tongue is already pretty painful as a cut, right, on my heart. But to go and touch me it gets even worse. Right? It's like you're adding uh, insult to injury right there. And that's just you know what I went through as someone who was losing their hair. As for other people, I think a lot of other people can relate. Weight issues, right? For guys, I think it happens, right? If, you, if someone's like obese, something, he feels bad, he does, he's hard for him to lose weight. For girls especially, especially for those girls who are like older, about to get married, people are all up on their case, right? Like certain family members and stuff, you gotta watch what you eat. You got to be careful, don't gain weight, don't lose weight, don't do this, don't do that. You got to fit into this outfit, blah, 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 blah. And especially after marriage, man, people are all up on your case. You gained weight, you're not losing weight, you're doing this, you're doing that, don't go out to eat so much, blah, blah, blah. You're trying to have like a nice life. Like, yeah, you might put on a few pounds, God forbid. But like, you can't even enjoy your newlywed life with your husband because you want to go out to eat at a restaurant or make some good food. You have to be like so scrutinized for just living your life. And when they say certain things about the fact that maybe you gained weight, or even if you know some some sisters are kind of um, sensitive about being skinny too, or you're so thin, you know, you're, you can wear like, this, like the tightest clothes, but you're still modest, people take offense to that too. But people are so insensitive to what they say, 
they don't realize what they're saying hurts people's feelings. How about pregnancy? For some reason, a lot of people in the Muslim Ummah have, uh, I don't know, in the past couple years, ever since you got older, it's like they gained their certificates or degrees in family planning. Because they're always asking girls, are you pregnant? Are you expecting? Are you and your husband trying? Which is really weird to ask, but for some reason it's asked. And you know the whole touching thing I mentioned? I know a sister that she was asked over and over by this one uh, elder. And she kept asking her, are you expecting? When are you going to have a kid? You know, you should have a kid. As if to show, like, you're not a complete human being until you have a kid. Which is a totally different story. But she keeps asking and asking every single party, every single time she sees her. Until one day she literally touched her stomach, right? And she said, is there anything in here? And the sister got really upset. She didn't say anything, but I don't think she had some like nice, any nice thoughts about that uh, elder person. So the insensitivity that people say, right? Like f things on people's faces, right? You got a zit, people point it out. I know a young guy, like a younger guy than me. I met him at the masjid. We were, we were talking after like, like Zohar or something like that. And I noticed he had like some sort of mark on his face. It was kind of light. I didn't really notice it at first, but it turns out it's his birthmark. I had no idea. In fact, I never noticed it uh, until that day. The reason I noticed it is because a bro another brother came later and asked him, like he said salam to him, and then right away like, dude, what's on your face? I saw him and I was like, man, I feel so bad for him, right? I know what it's like when people ask me about my hair, but now there's something on your face. I felt really bad for the guy. He looked like he wanted to just crawl into a corner and die. It was that embarrassing. I, I got embarrassed on his behalf. I tried to defend him like, oh, yeah, I, I can see it, but it's not that big. He said it. It's like, I have a birthmark. It's kind of big and stuff like that. But I was trying to like make him feel better. Like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I tried to change the subject. And then the other brother like mentioned something else about like job or career and he walked away. That guy looked like he just felt so bad. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning all of this in regards to the, like my haircut, like what, what I'm thinking about, what I'm reflecting about, is the Prophet ﷺ said, during your fast, if somebody doesn't watch what they say, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for them to fast. Now, Allah doesn't need us to fast, but it's basically saying, if you're going to fast and not watch what you say in general, then what's the point of fasting, basically? Now, usually, this is in regards to backbiting, slandering, uh, tail spreading, like namima. Um, what else? Like saying things that you're not supposed to, like getting angry with Allah, like blaming Allah, so on and so forth. But we also have to remember insulting people. And not even like intentionally, but unintentionally as well. People have issues, physical deformities, and they know about it. Don't point it out. Right? The reason why I'm saying this is because I went through this as someone who had a physical deformity that most people don't have. And I know what it's like to be offended. Right, You don't have pretty thoughts about the person who said that to you. I don't want people to be fasting this month and then their fast basically get messed up because they are insensitive to others. Right, To others who have problems that they're not even responsible for. For some reason, right, God is testing them with something in their lives. They're trying to get through it. Don't make it worse for them. And don't make it worse for yourself because you're fasting. You got to make sure that you don't mess up your fast. So that's my reflection. It's kind of a little rant I had. But really, I just, I'm just i concerned. I'm worried about people who are going through certain physical issues they're not responsible for. And I'm worried about people who are trying to point them out that they might you know, mess up their fast for that. If someone's you know, losing their hair, they know it. You don't have to mention it to them. If someone's you know, gaining weight, don't worry about it. If someone you know, doesn't have a kid for a while, maybe they can't have kids. Maybe they're trying. And by you mentioning it over and over, you're rubbing salt into the wound. And if someone's got something on their face, they have a mirror at home. They know about it. You don't have to mention it. So let me know if you've ever faced something like this during Ramadan um, or outside of Ramadan. And inshallah, I'll talk to you guys later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.